Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to day 11 of our 10K in 30 days uh, challenge. So today is going to be really good. I want you to really buckle in and I want you to pay attention to this. This is a real story, real situation. We're going to talk about how the power of storytelling and how using your personal experiences, especially your testimonials, can open new doors for you in unexpected places. So um, we got to learn how to make our conversations count. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about how you transform, how you introduce yourself in social settings to move beyond like the role that you used to be in and to share your current passions and successes. Because you always want to make sure people know who you are now and just not who you were. So this is a real situation. And I also plan to send this to my good girlfriend because this is actually um, how she can transform the work that she does. So I'm going to set the story up for you. So hang in there with me for a second. Let me give you the backdrop to the story. And then I want you to think about what you need to do for yourself. So I have a good girlfriend who is currently a teacher. She's been a teacher for 22, 23 years now, and she's looking to transition out either through retirement or by just going on into her next journey. However, she's already taken the steps to do what it is that she's passionate about or that she loves to do, or even if it's just something that's bringing in income that she's really great at. So she decided to transition into real estate. And so in her, with her real estate, she sells houses. So she became a real estate agent. She sells houses and uh, she's been doing this maybe for a year or two now. And so we went uh, to, a, to a winery on Saturday. So we were going to celebrate my sister's birthday and uh, my sister invited some people out to the winery. It was a beautiful location. Everything was absolutely beautiful. And there were about 10 people there. So we started out with eight. No, it was more than 10. We started out with eight. And then four more came. So there were about 12 people who came to the winery event to celebrate my sister's birthday. Well, as we were there, uh, my, my good girlfriend, she immediately knew one of the ladies who was at the table with us. So the lady works with my sister, but the lady also knew my friend and they didn't know that each other were going to be there. They, they know each other because my friend who's the real estate agent used to be her kids teacher. So you, you see the connection I'm making here. So she was like, Oh, Hey, how you doing? And she was like, girl, is that you? And oh, girl, how's it been going? And boop, boop, boop. Okay. So we get to booping and the story is going and we laughing and we're having wine and we're eating food and everything is amazing. A few more people show up. We're having a good time. We're taking pictures. We're sitting in, you know, beautiful, uh, setting, nice wind blowing. Everything is really nice. We're having conversations. My husband is there. I'm talking to him a little bit on one side. I'm talking to my sister a little bit on the other side. I'm talking to my friend over here. I'm checking in with other people. We're just at the table, just having a good time. And so, um, my point is she was talking to the lady about how she used to be, you know, the lady knew she was her kid's former teacher. And she was talking about how they used to about her kids, about the school system, about this, about that. And she was really sh talking about her past. And that's not where you're at now. So it's really important to talk about what you're doing now because people remember you how they met you. They don't remember you. They don't know where you are now. And so I want you to always think about that because However they met you, that's how they know you. They don't know that you're doing real estate now. And even if you say casually, yeah, I'm, I, I transitioned into real estate, they still remember you as the teacher. So here's what I would have recommended for her to do. And I'm going to send this to her so she can see this. So I would have recommended for her when the lady was like, oh, yeah, my kids used to be in your class, boop, boop, boop. And you, you know, you acknowledge that and you say, absolutely. And you say, I love helping. I love that I was able to, to teach your kids. I love supporting kids. But, you know, now I'm doing something a little bit different. I still teach, but I also support other people in a different way. I, I just sold a house the other day to a 25 year old and 
that really brought joy to my heart to see this young lady who's not even in her professional job yet. You know, uh, a lot of these young people, they will rent for 30 and 40 years, not knowing that they can buy a home. And I actually helped her to realize a dream that she didn't even know that she could have because she thought that she didn't work a job that would allow her to buy a house. She didn't think that she would have the money. And so I really enjoyed that process. And so I want to do more of that because, you know, I'm in my 23rd year of teaching. And so I'm getting my next thing that I'm going to do together. But I'm really loving that. Uh, do you know anybody who's looking to buy a home or are you in a home? So it turns out the lady actually is looking to buy a home. So they did end up talking about it, but it was at the end. It was at the end when the lady was about ready to go. And so by starting the conversation and shifting her from I, I'm, a school, I'm a school teacher over to what I love doing right now. And you can do that through the power of testimonials. Through And so you don't have to tell them, I'm a real estate agent now and this is what I do. You can talk about one of your clients who you just helped, helped and how it made you feel, how it made them feel. And so just to say, I just helped a 25 year old buy a house and she's not even in her professional job yet. She works at CVS. That is telling that person who's standing there, who is much older, who's been in their professional job, who knows that they have stable income. That's telling them, oh, if she can help a 25 year old, she can help me. But not only that, when you say, yeah, she didn't think that she would be able to afford a home. She didn't think that she would have the, all of the money needed to buy a house because a lot of people think that you need a lot of money to buy a house. And then she could talk about how I helped her by, you know, connecting her with programs that, you know, would help her with her down payment and her closing costs. Well, what is that doing for the person who's listening? They are taking that in and they're putting themselves in that place and they're saying, oh, well, maybe she can help me because those are some of the things that I thought. Oh, I thought I had to wait a year or two to get all of my ducks in order in order to buy a house. And then you you top it off with some of the things that they are thinking or the challenges that they are having that stops them from making a decision. So you can say how she didn't her her house note now is less than the rent that she was paying on her one bedroom apartment. And so she's actually saving money every month as opposed to paying the high rent. She's now paying a lower house note and she can put the remaining money that she was paying in rent into a fund for any uh, repairs that she may need. But she really doesn't have to worry about that the first year because she got a home warranty plan. And so it was a win-win. I'm just so happy to be able to do this work. It's so fulfilling. And I didn't think that I would find anything as fulfilling as teaching, but I'm absolutely loving this. You see how as she's telling this client testimonial in a conversational type of way, she is dispelling some of the myths that people have. And she's also helping them to dream a bigger dream. And so as she was talking, uh, she did end up giving the lady her card but it was in a very casual way, not a let me help you. And people remember you by what you say and how you show up. And so this lady is seeing you here at an event. You are in her mind an established person because you've been a teacher. You've been our kid's teacher. And so you already have her trust. And so it's about closing the deal, going ahead, letting them know when the lady said, Oh, because I'm looking to buy a house next year. That's what brought the conversation up. It wasn't through uh, my friend bringing up the idea or the fact that she now sells real estate. And do you know anyone? It came up through natural conversation. <clears throat> and so we have to always be thinking about these networking opportunities. So this is what I want you to think about. First of all, I want us to talk about, I want us to understand the importance of testimonials and showcasing what your current role is and what successes you've had. Because a good testimonial is not just a review. It is a powerful story that will resonate deeply with others and open up new opportunities. So just by talking about that, 
that would that opened up new opera that will open up new opportunities but then i also want you to think about these testimonials as a key you know when you have a key a key opens a specific door right it opens a specific door it doesn't open every door but a well-told testimonial it can unlock opportunities in the minds of your listeners. You see what I'm saying? It reveals not only what you do, but also the impact of the work on other, spe other people's lives, like opening the door to potential new relationships and opportunities. So I want you to think about this. This is what I want you to think about. I want you to imagine that you're at a casual gathering, much like our winery event. And someone asks you, how are you? How are you? What are you going to say? This is what I want you to do. Instead of just sharing pleasantries, oh, I'm great. How are you? I want you to weave in a testimonial that highlights your recent achievements. Like in her instance, helping a young buyer secure their first home. This turns that simple greeting into a potential business lead. So I want you to think about that. I want you to imagine you're at the, your, your next gathering. You don't even know what it is, but we need to prepare our story. We need to prepare our story be before attending any social or networking gathering. I want you to prepare a short and impactful story or testimonial that reflects your current professional passion and the success that you're experiencing. And so before I go to any events, I always think about which client stories I'm going to share. I might have one or two just in case I'm with this part, the person for a prolonged amount of time. Some of you all know about the, um, what is her name? The socially savvy mentor, the socially savvy mentor. Um, she helps teenagers. I think they're uh, nine to 14 to have positive relationships online and offline. And so when I'm going to an event, I might already say, I'm going to share Latasha's story. She's the socially savvy mentor. And so I'm talking about how this lady who's been in the school system had a great uh, experience. She normally teaches fourth grade. And, and anytime I had problems, I would send the, the them to her because she would be able to talk to the kids and get them calmed down and all of that stuff. I know that she's great at developing positive relationships. Well, she decided that she wanted to start a consulting business and, and get paid for the work that she's currently doing for free. And she has absolutely blossomed in our community. She has already secured uh, work and being paid for the work that she was already doing for free. She's been pitching her programs. She's planning her exit for the 24, 25 school year. And she totally is on the right trajectory. She has created connections for herself. And so she is having a, an amazing time. And that's what I want for all women to really be able to step into the next portion of their lives and do it confidently and do it where they're able to live their dream and not just exist. You see how I already know who my person is. I'm going to talk about Latasha. Um, I might decide I'm going to talk about this person. It all depends on the event that I'm going to and what type of audience I know I'm going to be with. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is practice the art of casual conversation because you got to learn how to steer a casual conversation towards a short story that highlights uh, your professional uh, abilities and achievements. But you got to make it natural and not forced. And I know that that's probably what my good girlfriend was thinking. She was thinking, we're here at the winery. The lady knows me as a teacher. And she was probably trying to figure out how she's going to weave in that she's now doing real estate. Well, it's real simple. You begin, you know, you figure out at what point in the conversation can you talk about what you're most proud of? And, and like for me, in her situation, I would have been, as we were talking about the ladies' kids and how well they're doing, I would say, yeah, I absolutely love that work. And I'm, I'm, I'm transitioning out of the school system because, you know, I'm near my 25 year mark and I've been selling real estate. And girl, let me tell you, I helped this uh, young lady uh, just a couple of weeks ago close on her first home. And when I say my heart melted, my heart melted. This 25 year old young lady who does not work a professional job, who had no idea of where she was going to get her closing costs or her down payment from. She uh, told me that she was tired of paying you know, 10 50 a month in rent 
And I was like, I can help you. And so that's exactly what I did. I helped her to not only close on her first home, but she bought her house with no money down. She didn't have to have any money out of her pocket other than earnest money. And that's what I want to do. I'm going to be, ch I'm changing generations in a different way because everybody, I think that black um, own, home ownership is our key to wealth. And so I'm helping these young people and older people to get, you know, into their first home. And even, even if they've had a home before, but that just melted my heart. And so that's the work that I'm loving right now. You see, it doesn't have to be forced because you're not just bragging on yourself. You're bragging on your client and the success that they've had. So then the, you know, once you, you you're going to have to do a little practice on this now. So you want to make sure that you're highlighting your capabilities and your achievements. It can't be forced. And then you got to follow up. So if that story piques their interest, don't just leave it at that. People offer to discuss more over coffee or send them more information later. Now, one of the things that I will say for my good girlfriend, uh, sometimes we think that giving people a business card is enough. You, you do need to always have your business cards or your digital contact information ready. And again, I'm going to keep telling y'all, digital, digital, digital. Because when you do that high hello card or that digital card that you're doing, you're getting their information and they're getting your information. But I want us to stop just passing people business cards and leaving the honest on them. No, what, what if she's not, she forgets. What if she loses that card? What if she doesn't call you? Stop doing that. If you know that this lady has just said, I want to buy me a home. She's the one who said this, that created the conversation. You cannot just leave it at passing a business card. You need to say, oh, you, you want to buy a house? That's amazing. You know what? I, I have some resources that can help you. Let's set up a call so that I can give you some resources. Now, she's not ready yet. Of course, she's not ready yet. That's okay. You're going to help her. This is what I mean by providing value. So you're going to say, let's go ahead and set up a call right now. Put it in the phone. You don't have to have everything set up. Put it in your phone. Okay, so uh, what are you doing next week? Because I want to talk to you. I want to share this resource with you. And I want to send it to you. And I want to, um, you know, talk to you about a couple of things. You don't have to be ready to buy now. But let me give you some resources to help you. See, in that way, you're A, getting her email. You're getting her phone number. And you're getting a time to follow up on the schedule right now. Now, what happens when you get on the call? You're actually going to give her the resource that you have available. You're going to get a little bit more information and then you're going to tell her what your next steps are. So that's in real estate buying, but in our work, uh, for some of us who are working in contracts and in education, uh, and just really just trying to get with your ideal client when they say, what it is they're looking for and it matches what it is that you do we cannot just end at giving them a business card we need to think about what is a resource or something of value that we can provide to them and let's set up a coffee chat let's discuss this more over a coffee chat or i think i have some things that will support you uh let's set up a time to talk next week so that i can pull them together and have them prepared for you because i really think that you have a really great idea and i'll be able to help you so you got to figure out what your follow-up is, but your follow-up is not just giving them a business card because that's leaving the responsibility on them to follow up with you. And you need to be the one following up with them. They are the client. So you need to follow up with them. So I hope this has been helpful. And I hope this helps my friend as well so that she can uh, definitely sell more houses. But also let me say this, and there were other people over at the table who were of, you know, who were not homeowners. Anybody right now who's not a homeowner is your client. Just like you are, anybody who works in schools, anybody who has a need for your curriculum, anybody who has kids that needs tutoring, whatever your subject is, anybody who fits that profile is your, is your potential client. And you take those potential clients down to your ideal client. But you got to get the big neck cast first to see uh, do you have kids? That, that means I might be able to tutor them. Do you have a business? I might be able to write a curriculum for you. Whatever the thing is, do you work in a school? I might be able to come in and do PD for you. So that's the big net. 
But to get them down to the smaller net, you got to see, are they my ideal client? So you might um, get on the one to one with them or at least get them on your email list. So like in, in that situation that we were in, we were at a winery and there were other people over at the table who we knew, we knew them. And so again, just passing out your card is not enough. You want to go and introduce yourself because we all know each, you know, we all know someone who knows someone go and introduce yourself. And, you know, you do the normal, Hey, how you doing? Um, you know, I, it's nice to meet you. It's a beautiful day outside. What do you do? And they tell you what it is they do. You're checking for a few things. A, do they have a job? B, you know, do they seem like they're looking for a home? And then in the middle of that conversation, you're going to talk about how you help this 25 year old close on a home with no money down. Well, that that's going, going to bring up some questions. They're going to say, well, how did you do that? And so we have to get into the habit of creating opportunities for ourselves and not waiting for someone to give us an opportunity. And that goes for all of us. And so as you're thinking about what it is that, you know, like your story, think about not only your story, but what is your follow up going to be when someone's interest is piqued? What are you going to say to get them on the schedule and do more than just give them a business card? So, and, and then the say, I always want to go back to, we like the digital contacts because it not only gives them your information, but it gives you their information. So if nothing else, we can follow up from the contact. When they accept your business card, their phone is going to give you their information, whether they have hi, hello or not. Okay. So I hope this is helpful. So your challenge, let me tell you what your challenge today is to craft a brief, compelling story or testimonial about a recent, a recent success. That's your job. And I want you to share this story the next time someone asks how you're doing. And I want to hear how it goes. Share your experiences in the comments during our next session. Now, this is a challenge and you're supposed to be doing the things day by day. It's day 11. I'm giving you your task. Your task is to come to craft a brief, compelling story or testimonial about a recent, a recent success that you've had, whether it was paid or unpaid. It does not matter. We're not talking about how much money you made. We're talking about the person, the outcome, how they felt, what results they got. And I want you to be ready to share this story the next time someone asks you how you're doing. Because you can say more than just great. Like when, when they say, how are you? Oh, I'm feeling real good. I just helped a 25-year-old young lady buy her first house. And she was not, she's not even in her professional job. Girl, I feel so good right now. I'm on cloud 10. You see that? So I want to hear how it goes. Share it in the comments on the next, next session. So I want you to remember that every conversation is a chance to introduce uh, the your world to the world that you're in to your current passions, passions and achievements. Okay. So I want us to turn these conversations into networking opportunities. I want us to leverage our stories and create opportunities for ourselves. It's time to stop sitting back waiting on somebody to notice what you're doing. Uh, I want y'all to subscribe and don't forget to hit that bell icon. But I also need y'all to like this video. Y'all ain't been liking my videos. Press that little button and like this video. Join the community. And y'all, come on, let's make it happen. And if you're trying to figure out how to sell your services to school systems uh, and community-based organizations, you need to sign up for the upcoming workshop on August 31st. Sign up for the workshop. I'll put the link in the description. And um, I come on back for day 12. We're ready for day 12. We got a lot to talk about and a lot more to happen. And don't give up on yourself. Remember your intention. We're only at day 11. We got plenty of time to close contracts, to make money, and to bring income into our household. So if you have not made any money yet, you cannot go down the rabbit hole of, oh, this ain't working. No, we're preparing. We're, some people have made money. I talked to somebody yesterday who made $1,000. $1,000 is more than what you would have made had you not been doing anything. So you can make money, okay? But you got to get your mind right. You got to get your stuff in order. You got to get your steps together. And so sometimes it's just a process. 
Come on now, don't give up on me now. Do not quit. And if you're ready to learn how to sell your services to school systems, colleges, and community-based organizations, sign up for the uh, workshop. It's a two-hour workshop that's happening on August 31st. And I'll put it in the description for you. All right, y'all. See you tomorrow on day 12. Looking forward to hear about some of these uh, contracts and some of this money that we've been making.